Hello everyone again and welcome to our first webinar in English. For those people who learn Russian and plan to do the test at A1 level. My name is Alek Krinitsky. I work in the Language Testing Center at St. Petersburg State University as an examiner and expert in testing Russian as a foreign language. Right. Mm. Well, today we're focusing on A level for candidates. Going to take this test and uh, we'll also share some ideas and strategies with you. But first, uh, mm, let's uh, talk about the history of St. Petersburg State University. As you might know, it's the oldest university in Russia and it was founded in 1724 and uh, it's one of the leading country's universities. More than 30,000 students and 12,000 academic staff work here and uh, it has almost 70 years of teaching Russian as a foreign language. And just a few words about the language testing center I work for. It was founded on the 22nd of August 1997. Well, we have, uh, we've already tested in Greece, Germany, Turkey, Serbia, South Korea, China, Czech Republic, Norway, Great Britain and many other countries. And we also have opened 80 testing centers abroad. Uh, we are a partner of association of language testers in Europe and uh, uh, after examinations uh, we issue internationally recognized certificates. Look at the TORFL test of a foreign of a Russian as a foreign language certificate. Well, it's an official state certificate, certificate and uh, uh, when you have passed the exam, you also can get a portfolio with detailed description of uh, candidate's result, the number of points and percentage for each of the papers. Well, uh, next. Uh, A level or A1 level or elementary level corresponds with the common European, European framework of reference CIFAR. What is CIFAR, you might know? It's uh, an international standard for describing language ability. It describes language ability on a six-point scale from A1 beginners or elementary up to C2 for those who have mastered the language. What is A1? It's uh, the first of six TOEFL examinations. This test introduced candidates to everyday written and spoken Russian and it is an excellent way for them to gain confidence and improve their Russian. The tests are written around familiar topics and focus on the skills needed to communicate effectively in Russian through listening, speaking, reading and writing. And uh, well, the, uh, the rest of the levels uh, are cer certainly correspond with the same um, framework of reference, but we're focusing only A1 level today, so we'll go on. <coughs> well, and again, A1 level briefly. It's a good start for the high levels, and you see, it, it may be called a survival Russian. Uh, 780 words, active words, and uh, 
the course is intended for 101 and 20, 120 hours. And look, it provides elementary communication in Russian with minimal grammar and vocabulary. Uh, Social-cultural domain of communication and in everyday communication. And uh, A1 level can help you understand basic instructions or take part in simple conversations understand basic notices, instructions and advertisements, and complete basic forms, write notes, including times, dates and places. Well, uh, before examinations, you can uh, do self-assessment, uh, which is in line with CIFAR. What can I do at the A1 level? Look, look at the chart. It focuses on understanding, speaking and writing. When you listen, you can recognize familiar words and very basic phrases concerning yourself, your family and immediate concrete surroundings when people speak slowly and clearly. And when you read, you can understand, understand familiar names, words and very simple sentences, for example, notices and posters or in catalogs. And uh, when you speak, you can interact in a simple way, provided the other person is prepared to repeat or rephrase things at a slower rate of speech and help you formulate what you're trying to say. You can also ask and answer simple questions in the areas of immediate need or on very familiar topics. When you produce uh, spoken, well, spoken language, or when you make spoken contributions, you can use simple phrases and sentences to describe where you live and people you know. When you write things at this level, you can write a short, simple postcard. For example, sending holiday greetings. You can fill in forms with personal details. For example, entering your name, nationality and address on a hotel registration form. Let's move to another chart. Let's focus on the test structure or format. Well, the test includes five papers or subtests. Uh, they're namely grammar and vocabulary, reading, listening, speaking and writing. To pass the example, the candidate need to gain 66% for each subtest or for one of them more, more than or 60%. And it's possible to reseat or retake one or two subtests. Let's uh, see them in detail, all these five papers. First, uh, it's grammar and vocabulary paper or subtests. As you can see on the chart, it lasts for 40 minutes. It has six parts and it contains 70 tasks. And uh, the test uh, mainly focuses on everyday vocabulary, noun cases, adjective case, adjectives cases and pronouns. It also focuses 
on verbal conjugation or changing of uh, verbs endings and uh, it also focuses on verbs of motion without prefixes and uh, some basic syntax structures. Well, uh, here's an example of uh, the test. Look at the chart. It says, it reads uh, Katya, then a gap, Ispansky Yizik. And there are three options to, to choose. Well, naturally, it's uh, the answer, the correct answer is Izuchayet. Katya Izuchayet Ispansky Yizik. Uh -huh. When you get the right answer, like Izuchayet, it's uh, uh, it's B, it's B in Russian. Here's a mistake. A, A, B, V. Mm -hmm. It should have been A, B, V. Well, Katya uh, Izuchet, you circle this letter on a working matrix you are given before the test starts. Later, I'll, uh, I'll tell you about the matrix and show you the matrix for students to complete. Next, it's a, a reading paper or subtests. It also lasts for 40 minutes. It has six parts and uh, contains 30 tasks. And you can use a bilingual dictionary in this test. Don't forget to bring it with you because, well, often students just forget to take dictionaries with them and it can be very helpful. Well, uh, the test includes uh, or focuses on phrases to be completed, announcements, notices and advertisements, short simple articles, schedules and TV programs, short texts about 200 or from 200 to 250 words and short stories, the same quantity of amount of words. Let's look uh, at the example. Uh, uh, the text. Фитнес, фитнес клуб Планета Спорт работает с 7 утра до 23.00 вечера. Студентам скидка с 14.00 до 17.00. It's an advertisement. Well, and uh, you see, again, the three option option answers. Yeah. Fitness club предлагает скидки A. Всем клиентам B. Студентам университета V. Студентам специальные часы. Well, naturally, the answer is uh, студентам университета. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you get this answer, you circle uh, letter B, well, in a particular line, uh, well, in your working matrix. Next, let's fo focus on listening subtest or paper. It lasts 30 minutes. It contains four parts and includes 20 tasks. Uh, in this, te this test mainly focuses on phrases, short dialects from 20 to 30 words, longer dialects from 120 words to 150 words, and monologues or uh, long tongues. Uh, the length is from 120 to one. 
50 words. Well, and all texts are heard, heard twice. Look at the example from the test, from the open test. Uh, пожалуйста, салат оливье и жареную курицу. Что будете пить? Минеральную воду. Они говорят, где? В магазине, дома, в ресторане. So again, you choose the correct answer. And naturally, it's in a restaurant. And then you circle this letter in a particular line in your working matrix. Next. Uh, now we're looking at writing subtest. Uh, it lasts for 30 minutes. It has only one task. Well, and uh, you have to write 15 phrases at least. Uh, you can write more, but uh, you're not advice to write less and five questions yeah the example of the task uh, well you you can read it in Russian I'll translate you the task into English you have studied to learn Russian language your friend is interested why you have chosen this unusual or this particular language. Write a letter to your friend and uh, tell him yeah, about this according to the plan. Why are you learning this language? Uh, how long have you been learning this language? Where do you learn this language? How do you learn the language at home? or in the classroom, or you do a Russian course in the evening. Well, uh, which is difficult in Russian? Which is easy? Which is very interesting? Something like that. And uh, who do you speak Russian with? And finally, why mm, do you think it's a good idea or it's not a good idea to study Russian language. Well, uh, when you write your letter, you have to, it's a good idea to explain why you write this letter and uh, uh, in the end of the letter you ask questions to a friend and ask him to write an answer to your letter. And uh, there must be from 12 to 15 sentences in your letter and five questions. That's important. And you see, uh, there's a picture of Pocket Dictionary uh, issued by Langenscheid, a German uh, publisher. You can use a bilingual dictionary. Well, in short, doing this subtest. That's very important too. So don't forget to take a, diction a good dictionary with you. Well, next, and maybe the most important one, it's uh, the speaking subtest or paper. It uh, lasts for 25 minutes. It contains three parts and 11 tasks. Well, in this test you uh, have to take part in a conversation or a dialogue. Five tasks. You, in the second task, you have to start a dialogue, a conversation according to the situation given to you by the speaking examiner. And finally, you have to produce uh, a monologue or uh, your own long-term uh, 
containing 10 or 12 phrases or more, not less, phrases. For example, look at the examples on the chart. Yeah, and when preparing for the test, you can use, again, a bilingual dictionary. Look, uh, task one. Uh, the speaking examiner asks you to take part in a conversation and you answer him or her. For instance, что вы любите делать в свободное время? What do you like doing in your free time? Yeah, if you ask it, if you ask it in English. Well, your answer uh, should uh, well. You can uh, well. It's important. Yeah, uh, I just say it's important to deal with most test test tasks in speaking section. Uh, for example, here in task one, there will be five questions. And if you can deal with most of them, it's, uh, it will be good for your final result. Yeah, you can uh, produce some simple structures. Well, you can also make some basic mistakes, uh, but uh, better not, yeah, and um, of course you can attempt some more complex structures if you can, and uh, you can, uh, and you can, and you should use uh, some uh, cohesive, simple cohesive devices to connect uh, phrases or sentences like and, uh, because, uh, Something like that, okay? And, uh, uh, well, normally you shouldn't uh, respond a question, the question uh, in a phrase at a word, at a word level. It's of always better to respond at phrase lef level if possible. Next, it's, uh, Task two, uh, the examiner uh, uh, shows you or reads you a situation and uh, you understand it and you start a conversation. For example, you, uh, вы в ресторане, закажите обед. You are very simple thing, yeah? You are in a restaurant order meals. How would you start? There are not many ways because it's an etiquette conversation. You can ask a, a waiter to come to your table. You can ask for a menu and uh, later continue your dialogue and, and so on. But again, uh, it's better to respond at phrase level, better to start at phrase level, uh, not at word. And uh, next, uh, exercise three, or task three. And uh, you, before the test, you're given uh, time, uh, it's about five minutes or ten minutes, to prepare, uh, to prepare a long turn on a specific topic. Here it's my free time, how I spent my free time. And, uh, well, you're always given some questions to organize, to organize your story. Well, and you can use them when you speak during the tests. For example, here, how I spend my free time. У вас много свободного времени. Что вы обычно делаете в свободное время? Куда вы любите ходить? Вы встречаетесь с друзьями? У вас есть хобби? И так далее. I'll translate these uh, questions into English. Do you have a lot of free time? Uh, what do you usually do in your free time? Where do you like uh, going in your free time? Do you meet with friends? 
do you have a, a particular hobby or do you have any interests and so on. And according to this plan, you compose your story. And uh, again, uh, let's go back. Your story should be no less than 10 or 12 phrases. It can be more, of course. You can say more. Well, next. Next, uh, uh, students and candidates might be interested in assessment criteria we use when assessing their responses, their contributions, when uh, the candidates are speaking. First, it's uh, well, the most important thing is uh, communicative achievement. Because, you know, when you talk, it's always very important that you, uh, uh, that you aim at a, uh, at a specific goal in a conversation or in a monologue. For example, here, uh, you take part in a conversation and answer the question. Yeah? Uh, the examiner. Tell me, please what the weather is like today. And uh, if uh, the candidate says, today it's a uh, Tuesday, for example, as, it's, uh, as it reads here on the chart, so the, the communicative achievement is very poor, as you might understand. Yeah, it's ac actually, it's inadequate. So, which answer would be good? Yeah, uh, again, you'd better answer on a phrase level, not a word level. Uh, like, сегодня хорошая, солнечная, теплая погода. Like, today's, the weather's warm, sunny, and nice. Something like that. Another thing is, uh, another criteria is text organization. Here on this level it's uh, very easy. It's just a number of words. Uh, let's focus on the task. Write a letter to your Russian friend. Your letter must contain uh, no less than 15 phrases and five questions. And uh, if you say, yeah, there's an example of your answer, of candidate's answer. Привет, Антон. Все хорошо тут. Как дела, Джон? You, you understand it's just not enough and it just doesn't comply with, um, with the task. And uh, actually, the communicative, well, the communicative goal hasn't been reached here and the text is not organized and the number of words is not enough and so on. Another criteria for productive skills, I mean for writing and speaking, is content or task relevance and cohesion and coherence. Let's, let's focus on them. Content or task relevance. Uh, the task sounds like that. Подготовьте сообщение на тему «Я и мой друг». Расскажите, где и когда вы познакомились. Uh, please, uh, I say it in English. Uh, well, talk uh, talk on the topic, uh, my friend and I. Uh, tell us, please, where and when you met. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you, you can see the candidate's answer. Мой друг Саша 
Он умный и добрый. Я встретил его 10 лет назад. Mm -hmm. Well, it's okay, but there's no information about where you met. Mm -hmm. You see. Next, cohesion and coherence. Uh, look at the example. Каждый вечер я долго читала книгу. Моя мама сказала мне, что я не читала больше. I'll say it in English. Every evening I read a book for, for long. My mother told me what... Uh, yeah, I wouldn't translate this. Yeah, there's a clear mistake here. Yeah, so the correct answer is my mom told me not to read a book anymore. So there's a mistake connected to cohesion and coherence. You need another pronoun to connect two sentences. Or another example. Сегодня хорошая погода, потому что мы идем в парк. Well, I'll try to say it in English. Today is a nice weather because we go to a park. Definitely it's wrong. Yeah, wrong connection, wrong cohesion. Again, you need another uh, another another cohesive device like today's another uh, today's a nice weather so we go to a park in Russian so is поэтому well that's what I mean uh, about cohesion and coherence when talking about productive skills and what kind of mistakes we can uh, come across when we we'll listen uh, to the candidates or examinees or when we check their uh, written papers. Well, let's focus on another slide. And it focuses on communicatively significant errors and communicatively insignificant errors. Our candidates make uh, when they talk or write. Uh, look, uh, what is the differences? It's very simple. Significant errors uh, impede communication. Or sometimes significant errors make communications just impossible. Uh, the errors can be of different types, uh, or different origin. They can be just phonetical or graphic mistakes or grammar mistakes. Well, various mistakes, but what is important is their meaning. Significant errors impede communication or make it just impossible. Let's uh, look at some examples. First, Страница Китая, Пекин. When I listen to such a phrase or read it in a letter or, or something, well, uh, страница means something very different from wh what it is supposed to be in this phrase. Страница means page in, in English yeah? and in Russian. So, I don't know why the student has made these mistakes, this mistake. Maybe mm, he or she, well, had in mind something correct, but because of phonetical or, phonetical or graphic interference, it just, he or she just put down this. Stranitsa Kitaya Pekin. Well, we understand it's about uh, Capital, the capital of China is Beijing, but it impedes communication naturally, so we consider it uh, communicatively significant 
mistake or error. Another example. В этом термине я редко дома. That's another interesting mistake. Of course, is if uh, uh, the addressee of the conversation knows Roman languages like Italian or Portuguese or Spanish, he might guess the meaning that termin means something like semester in Russian. But if it's uh, just <coughs> ordinary speaker, <coughs> so the communication cannot be possible in this ex uh, this sentence. That's why we consider it again a communicatively significant error. Well, another another example. Мы всегда часто смотрим телевизор или читаем книга. Ниногда мы говорим о работе. Look at these mistakes. Ниногда uh, uh, is very interesting. Yeah? Well, you might say it's иногда or another uh, or another person would say it's никогда. So that's why we don't know what exactly the speaker means. That's why we consider this mistake communicatively significant, because you just cannot guess what it means. Yeah? Well, thank you. And now let's focus on some communicatively insignificant errors. Well, as I've already told you, insignificant errors don't impede communication. Uh, even though a speaker or the speaker uh, make, makes uh, such mistakes, we can understand him or her quite clearly. Well, a first example. Я хочу говорить по-русски хорошо. I want to speak Russian well. Well, actually, uh, what kind of mistake is this? It's insignificant. It's a grammar mistake. Uh, the correct answer is Я хочу говорить по-русски хорошо. It's just a grammar mistake, but it doesn't impede communication. Uh, anyone can understand quite clearly what the speaker wanted to say. Another example. В школе я учился физику и математику. You can see clearly it's a mistake. Vocabulary and grammar mistake of mix. It's a mistake of mixed nature. Uh, well, and uh, the correct answer is в школе я изучал физику и математику. So you need another verb and uh, another type of verb and so on. But when the speaker says this, you, you can clearly understand what he or she wanted to say. That's why it's insignificant grammar and vocabulary mistake. Another, another example. Он будет пить кофе без молоком. He'll drink coffee without milk. Uh, here it's another grammar mistake. mistake. Well, it's a noun case mistake. It's a genitive case. Uh, probably the examinee is uh, not very well in using noun cases. We don't know. And uh, But uh, this mistake doesn't impede communication. So we consider this error insignificant. Well, I hope you 
now you now you can understand this is very important distinction uh, between different kinds of mistakes communicatively significant and communicatively insignificant errors okay let's uh, focus on another slide or chart when speaking what skills do we usually assess first it's etiquette what is this what is this these are uh, common phrases used in conversations like good morning how are you uh, how things going on and and so on and other other phrases like that fixed phrases in typical uh, etiquette or cult social cultural situations let's have a look at the example uh, Вы так хорошо играете на гитаре, где вы учились? Да, я знаю, мама учила меня. Oh. They, uh, actually, uh, I'll, I'll translate this in English. Uh, you play the guitar so well. Where did you learn it? Yes, I know. My mother or my mom taught me, has taught me. Well, uh, from point of view of etiquette, it's not a good answer, even though you understand it and uh, you understand the meaning, the message behind the phrase, the answer. Uh, so that's okay. But you get uh, minus 0 0.5 points for this sort of mistakes mistake another example вы давно не видели вашего друга а сегодня встретили его начните с ним разговор you haven't seen your friend for quite a long time and today uh, you met him just start conversation with him and the student says Hello, how are you? What do you do? Well, it's okay. This answer is all right for starting the conversation. And uh, uh, you see, for etiquette and good pronunciation, we'll talk it about a bit later, you can get extra points. That's important too. Well, what is pronunciation? Well, actually, your uh, students or candidates at this level are required to be mostly intelligible, even though some mm, sounds may be unclear. And uh, uh, you are required to have limited control of word stress. So you are not expect to, expected to to march at this level, well, but uh, to to gain a good score, uh, to get a good mark, your uh, speaking should be mostly intelligible again, even though you has limited control of word stress and intonation. So I say again. Uh, it's important that your long term or speaking is mostly intelligible. Well, with some mistakes, it's all right. Next. Well, now let's talk about uh, uh, recommendations for test task performance. Well, when you do grammar and vocabulary test, uh, one very important thing to well to make sure is managing your time effectively. So just 
just keep it in mind that time goes on and you have to manage your time. When you do the reading part of the test, first, for example, you read the questions, find and underline key words, then you scan the text, keeping in mind the key words, and after that you answer the questions. So you see, uh, finding the key words in the questions is of absolute importance, utmost importance to do this exercise correctly. And when you do the listening uh, paper, well, first you read the tasks. First, you read the tasks. Don't waste your time. Yeah? Try to read the tasks quickly. And then you listen to the text. And then, while you're listening first, you, you might remember that uh, every text or passage or conversation are heard twice. You, while first listening, you mark the answers in your draft. That's very important. It, it can help a lot you when doing this paper, I mean listening. Next, uh, some recommendations for productive skill task performance. It's namely writing and speaking. Of course, when you write a letter to a friend, it's an informal letter, and uh, you might remember it should be no less than 10 or 12 sentences and 5 questions. That's very important. So first you think over the plan of the letter. You plan the letter. That's important. But, well, again, manage your time effectively. If, you, if it takes too much time, of your time, well, thinking about the plan or and uh, uh, doing the draft of your letter and so on. So I'm afraid uh, you have uh, you won't have enough time to complete the task. Then you write the text according to the questions in the task. That's again very very important and. Uh, well, people who can, uh, who like uh, writing plans and drafts, of course, you can do that. But we advise you not to, because it, it takes a lot of your time, really. And uh, well, and we are afraid you won't have enough time for doing this test. That's important at all levels, and especially at this level, at level A1. Next. Speaking section. Uh, what kind of recommendations we can give you here? First, you see, <laughs> better to say less, but say it correctly. Yeah, and it's true. Well, actually, uh, the formula is, uh, as for any uh, people's activity, I think is uh, you do what is necessary and enough. And of course, you should avoid yes, no, I don't know answers. Again, I remind you, your answers should be on phrase level, not on word level. And, uh, of course, you'd better answer the questions with one or two phrases. Well, if you ask me, can I say more? Yes, of course, you can. But uh, one or two phrases would be, two phrases would be excellent. And if they're correct, that would be just perfect at this level. And uh, 
Another good advice. Often uh, our candidates are a bit confused uh, about the tasks. I mean, what I mean, yeah? Uh, they say, oh, it's not about me, I've never been there, I've never bought there, and so, so on. But, you know, you don't need to tell the truth uh, about yourself. You just use your imagination and uh, make stories about yourself, about any other people. So, no need to tell the truth, actually. Next, uh, you should mind the style. Even though the style of your long turn or your monologue uh, is very simple on this, at this level, it's just informal. Yeah? You should mind the style. You shouldn't use uh, uh, bookish expressions and so on, but I don't think it's very relevant to this level. And uh, another thing, you might remember that task three is about uh, organizing, uh, about a monologue you have to do on a particular topic. Again, don't forget to plan your monologue according to the given questions. That's very, very important. In, uh, in your story or in your monologue, uh, there must be all answers or all answers in complete, correct sentences to all the questions given in you, to you in the plan. That's very, very important. It, uh, why, why it is important? It's important because then you achieve uh, your communicative goals yeah, you set out before you started your conversation. All right, another thing. Well, and let's talk uh, for a while about, uh, about procedures. Uh, first, technical procedures. On the day of the test, you should bring, or, well, you must bring with you, actually, a passport or other ID with a photo. Mm -hmm. Don't forget about this. You have also bring with you a receipt of payment for examination. That's, again, very important. And uh, you also take two ball pens of blue color. You can, you can bring a pencil and an eraser. And uh, you might remember, I've told you about this. You can also uh, take with you a bilingual dictionary. But don't forget, bilingual paper dictionary because uh, well and what is forbidding what is forbidding during the test well you see as you might know all electronic devices are forbidding at the test uh, you don't cheat copy you don't give anything to or take anything from another candidate. Otherwise, you will be disqualified. You don't take away examination papers from the classroom. Uh, you don't use or attempt to use an electronic dictionary. You don't talk to or signal to or disturb other candidates and, uh, and many other things, but these are most important ones. And uh, when can you use your dictionary you bring with you? Uh, normally you can use it when doing reading, writing and speaking 
preparation tasks. Yeah, here it only says reading and writing, but you can often use it when uh, preparing for uh, one of speaking tasks. Of course, you don't do make you don't make any noise near the exam room. Next. Yeah, let's uh, focus on this. Uh, uh, we call on this picture, we call this uh, gridded uh, table a working matrix, Rabuche Matrice. Look at this, yeah? Uh, it reads what? It reads the level, uh, the type of test you are doing now, then it says working matrix, then you put down your family name and name, like Henry Cooper, then the name of your country, like Australia, and the date of the test. In European format, it means what? Uh, the 14th of June 2019, for example, or 2020. And you see, there are one, two, three, four, five columns in this matrix, or so in this grid. One, two, three means a number of exercise or a number of tasks. Then, uh, I told you that almost all tasks in this test, in, in the test of this level, are three options, three options test. So, you choose A, B or V, A, B, V in Russian options. And uh, when you choose the answer, you circle it, like here, like in the example. But, you can often change your mind, and it's not a very big problem, and not a problem at all. You just cross out the answer you consider incorrect, and you circle another answer you think uh, correct. Well, and uh, additionally, you can put it in an empty box next to A, B, V, G, and so on. Yeah, you can you can put it in uh, in an to an empty box just to make sure the uh, the examiner understands what correct is. For example, yeah. Uh, there's an exercise, it's from reading section. Anna обожает изучать русский язык. What does it mean? Anna enjoys, loves learning Russian. What it means? Anna с трудом изучает русский язык. Anna не любит изучать русский язык. Ей очень Нравится изучать русский язык. I'll translate this in English. So, again, Anna loves studying Russian. What it means? She studies Russian with a lot of difficulties. She doesn't like studying Russian. She really likes studying Russian. Well, naturally, the correct answer is the letter, so you put it in the box, you circle it first, and uh, you circle it first, and that's enough, yeah. Well, I think this thing is very clear for you. Well, next. Well, uh, uh, now about uh, standards, testing standards in Russia. You see, um, actually there are a lot of books, but the standards are adopted and developed. Uh, first, they're developed by leading specialists and experts and 
St. Petersburg State University at Moscow State University in the early 90s. And you see there's a lexical minimum uh, when you study Russian as a foreign language. That's very important. And uh, there's some state educational standards on uh, teaching of Russian as a foreign language. All these books you can find on our site, uh, well, at the University uh, Language Testing Center and many other sites. That's not a big problem. Of course, you should uh, always, uh, it's uh, more for the teachers, or when you prepare tests or when you when you prepare your students for the test you should always refer to these standards that's very important another and uh, of course there are sample tests or open tests like uh, uh, 112 tests on Russian as a foreign language from A1 to B1 levels. Uh, in these books you can find uh, a lot of real examples of uh, sample tests uh, uh, and uh, well teach your students how to successfully pass them later. Uh, type of exercises, tasks, uh, the formats, type of texts, uh, style and so so on, everything you can find, you can find here. Well, and uh, of course a lot of students just start learning uh, Russian language at this level and there are a lot of good course books to help the teacher to organize learning and uh, uh, as well as for students uh, for uh, self-study course and so on. One of the best courses is Matryoshka, you see it. Uh, it's by uh, Karavanova, the author of the, the course, Matryoshka A1, uh, spoken course and grammar. That's a very, uh, very good course. We recommend you to use it at your courses. Next, there are another very interesting courses like uh, 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 We Invite You to Russia by Karchagina, uh, .ru, well, by Delmatava and so on. Yeah, actually, there are quite a lot of very good books. Uh, uh, so some you know very well, like probably Zhili, Byli, and Payekhali. Maybe a Russian souvenir, a Ruski souvenir. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. But these books are quite good, both for course learning for course learning and self studying they're modern they're equipped with uh, they have workbooks all these courses for self study work and uh, they have uh, audio and video discs and so so on so they're just very modern updated and good you can you can buy them at uh, well, at any at any site with, which which is uh, involved in this. Well, and uh, there are some good uh, exercise book just to train grammar and uh, vocabulary skills. It's a well known Russian for in exercises by Havronina and Shcherochenskaya. It's a very good. Mm -hmm. It's a very good course book. I can recommend it for everyone. And uh, Havronina and uh, Harlamova, Russian language. And again, it's a good exercise book to practice your grammar and vocabulary skills in Russian. Well, uh, Belikova, Shutova, Stepanova, 
first set steps, первые шаги, course book one, it's just for elementary students. Uh, I think it's also very good. It has a lot of exercises to train uh, your skills, grammar, especially grammar and vocabulary skills. But uh, I think it lacks of uh, communicative uh, exercises. Well, and next. Yeah, of course, there's some special books uh, for specific uh, for specific activities like easy reading. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it prepares your these uh, books prepare your students for uh, a reading test. Uh, you see, r uh, reading without uh, any problems by Kostyuk. Well, a magic box by Chubarava, uh, reading, read and understand everything, and so by Karavanova. Karavanova actually is a very good uh, book, uh, course book writer. Uh, we can recommend it for uh, language courses and so on. And finally, mm, of course, we have website, email, a telephone. And uh, you can find us on Instagram or Facebook. And uh, we can provide you with uh, a lot of testing materials, open tests, exercises, and advice. And uh, anything, <laughs> actually, you want. Well, and uh, uh, I think I'm finishing to deliver my, uh, my talk, my webinar. And uh, uh, if you have questions, I can ask them. Yeah, and uh, the moderator asks you to fill in the feedback form after the webinar, webinar finishes. You can find a link to it in Materials tab. Yes, uh, unfortunately, due to uh, coronavirus situation, all these sessions are online, of course. Thank you very much, Ludmila, for appreciating uh, the webinar. And. Uh, so you mean uh, you can can you do uh, examination online? Well, I I'm not sure. I'm not sure because it's quite it takes a long time and uh, and so so on. Yeah, of course. Uh, I think we uh, we could organize uh, 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 speaking online. Yeah, but I'm not sure about other papers like vocabulary and grammar. Uh, listening and so so on. Yeah, the moderator says <laughs> you, we can't take exams online right now, but we are working on it. Yeah, extensively. Uh, that's a good question. How scores for the tests are counting? That's very simple. So first we assess um, all tests separately. And it's very important uh, to gain 66% at each for each test. Well, normally it's we just uh, 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 well, of course, the type of mistakes are different, so we, uh, well, how to say that, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we take out, yeah, we take out points 
from 100, yeah, on the 100 scale, like uh, for a uh, grammar mistake or for, for grammar mistake which is not, which doesn't impede communication, we just take out uh, 0 0.5. For communicatively significant errors, we take out quite a lot of points, uh, namely two points, and so, so on. But we take uh, most points for things like um, uh, your story is not well organized or you missed something from your story and so, so on. Well, uh, most, most point we take out where if you don't achieve your communicative goal. That's the most important thing. And you see we take out just 0 0.5 for grammar mistake, graphic mistakes, and uh, orthography, and so on. So not much, really. Communication is uh, what you have to bear in mind. That's very important. Uh, yeah, any other questions? How much uh, does the exam cost? Uh, well, I, I, I'm not sure exactly. I'm not in this. Uh, I'm not in this business, <laughs> administrating and uh, and so so on. Yeah. Well, about five, six, seven thousand rubles, maybe. Well, if you have uh, uh, technical questions uh, like kind of uh, postponing the dates and so a uh, coordination, you just uh, contact our center administrators and so on. They're online and they answer the questions you are interested in. Okay, if there are no questions, thanks a lot for appreciating the seminar and uh, goodbye.